And then I know we watched Field Mash a little bit earlier today, and then there was also the ice melting that kind of brought that like uh, table, that bachelor table, to life. Um, and then I was, um, you know, and the, the excerpt that we saw from Institute Benjaminta, there's also that play with with ice. What 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 sort of thing? What what does the what does that signify to you guys? Since you, I'm sure you. Um, about, like, we must have kept the ice from Gilgamesh still in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> we probably could do it better. <laughs> I mean, I mean, kiss the ice, which is a text by Robert Walser, so it, it's trying to elaborate something. What about the repetition of this melting ice, both in the streets of, of crocodiles and also in uh, Gilgamesh? Oh, I don't think you should pay too much attention to that. All right, Todd, please. Thank you so much for presenting all of you, actually. Um, it's extraordinary work to us. For, um, some of us have already seen some of it, but in this context, it's um, always, again, new and shocking and um, compelling. And, you know, one feels awkward just speaking after that. So nonetheless, um, since we're kind of commissioned, all of us, <laughs> to do so. <laughs> to have I a all of us. <laughs> so uh, I just, um, this isn't arbitrary and, and not merely a gesture of politesse, but one of the, let's say, things that this time I, I became aware of but I don't know if you want to engage it or address it in any way, was the, um, the approach from, if I were to write about it, I would start by, by thinking about the approach from the back that um, was, was calling out in, in a number of uh, ways and it, on different registers including um, the Orfe going back or, or turning one's back on the resuscitation or the whole possibility of a resurrection. And of course, in the, um, in the Valsa and at, at the, in the, um, yeah, but also in the ballet, there, um, there was um, the, Tremendous, um, and it, it didn't operate as a refusal. At, at the same time, and one could imagine it also as as something that won't be faced. Um, I suppose the the refusal of face in a certain way that that um, would start me dreaming, and that that's I'm just starting to dream with you. Bad <laughs> 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 I think to go back to that thing, just the, the sequence in, in Crocodiles was really at a point when it's not really too apparent, but it's a sequence where the character actually sees the threads reverse. So the elements start to reverse and go the other way, and in a sense, dead elements resuscitate. So you see the dandelion, which was, as it were, extinct and abolished tries to resuscitate itself. And that whole sequence right in there was about that, that element. Please. One thing that I found most particularly affecting tonight was that there's a kind of microchoreography of the body in the last film in particular, so that uh, the crimped uh, dirty fingers that it inscribed uh, on the surface of the paper, the body from behind, the kind of stuttering disposition that it has, mimics the stop action figures in the, the animations that you have. And I thought that that kind of in, great inversion, uh, a kind of miracle of that disposition of figures on the screen by, in this case, live actors, was uh, particularly affecting and particularly with. Yes, no. I mean, that, that, that came from what we call Boy Scout thrift. <laughs> um, we, had a, um, we shot with a live action camera, but we undercranked. We shot it anywhere between six and nine frames. Yeah. 
We told the actress to move very, very slowly. But it was to conserve footage. <laughs> and so that effect was, was, was an improvement by, by, by proxy, I guess you might say. But you take advantage of it. The simple question I had that sparked my curiosity at this time is just to crack It's a little bit louder. It's difficult to the, the, um, the box that the doll goes to the tailor is wearing around his neck with the black and white stripes. It resembles the box in this... Everybody story. knows that. They do know it. OK, I've never <laughs> been able to ask you. It's, it's a little a homage to Goodwill and Dali. And Dali, Dali. Dali. Okay. yes, yes, definitely. I didn't know. But um, yes. Free seat, you're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What I'm kind of interested in with the feature film, we just saw a clip from, is here you are, you're making, a, you're making a film with actors, basically. And the one, so I guess what would be considered one of the basic rules of film is, is keep things in focus. And you've worked very, very strongly, very, very compositionally, very strongly with keeping a lot of things out of focus. So I just wondered if you wanted to tell us yeah, about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's something, I mean, it, I think it's something to do with the metaphysics of black and white. I mean, if the film had been in color, you would have been looking at something else. It's the distillation we sent to the cameraman. We wanted the, the, the blackest blacks, the whitest whites, and the most subtle grays. And we insisted on a lot of diffusion. And so we kept a very low f stop. We did tests beforehand. And that was part of the, the we felt the necessity to, to have to illuminate the but I also, also think that when you when you keep the focus very very low, as we do, it keeps the, the, the one object that you do have in focus is what you're going to be looking at. But I mean, so at some points you had nothing in focus too. Did we? I don't yeah. remember that. <laughs> yeah, there were a few points where it was Yeah, no one was good. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for me, this for me this remark, if I may, may comment, uh, is connected with what, uh, at least in my recognition, what Avital was was addressing. Um, this beautiful uh, shift between out of focus and focus uh, between the back 